Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another edition of Quincy Beolves Let's Play and where we're we playing today we are doing another Pokemon Ramble. Oh such a good series I, I think. Uh, it is for me at least. So we have uh, needs a knockout swell. Ooh they're all the same just with dark fighting and fire. So let's do this with fire. So what are we going to be talking about today? So uh, let, let's talk about my project today. So my thesis. So uh, one thing, so it itself is pretty polarizing, seeing as how I'll be taking a functional approach at religious studies, which can get a little people not too happy about that. Yeah, uh, because it'll be taking something sacred that is, you know, your beliefs and your faiths and saying all of that is pretty accurate all of the or I'm not gonna say accurate all of that is very legitimate and is very important to you as a human being and I totally respect that but the purpose of everything is like how do leaders and such try to get more people into the faith as it were so um, yeah and uh, so we have uh, so the thing that we're gonna be talking about is uh, clothing because uh, actually should we should save that for next episode so there are a few th main things that usually come in threes because I like threes uh, wait oh huh and so uh, that being, oh jeez, well, hmm, so, uh, how I'm going to have uh, the main setup and everything is going to be where, uh, you, as a player, you're trying to build your religious community or your religious institution in a newly freed, uh, environment, a religious market, and how you, you do that by, uh, uh, paying into uh, uh, goods that you can uh, like get to help grow yourself so uh, one of the things with the political economic study of religion is the concept of okay should I I mean yeah I'll do it like that uh, the political economic uh, arguments of religion is uh, basically says that everything that you do creates uh, like as a leader creates or some sort of uh, religious capital uh, religious or human religious capital is basically how many people uh, know and are fervent in your religion so there's a so much discussion and uh, talking about that. A uh, huge person to be looking into if you want to learn more about that is uh, Rodney Stark's research. Um, because he did a lot of work studying in the 1990s? Yes, uh, 1990. No, no, not. Uh, that was somebody else. Or did they work together? It was either they worked together or uh, he was alone on the project. I don't remember what it, which it was. But uh, essentially, uh, they came up with the political economic study of religion and uh, like kind of coined uh, religious capital. Uh, human religious capital. Ooh, that might be good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna bring this. Oh, excellent. So now I can grab a Fennekin because I have, wait. Ooh, never mind. I don't want a Fennekin. I want an Entei because he has an ability that is super powerful when you have, when the opponent has a lot of guys out. So, um, yeah. Uh, what was I talking about? It was... Political, economic, human, capital, yes. So, uh, you're try you want to build 
uh, this uh, human capital, uh, human religious capital. And how you do that is you purchase into things such as, uh, like, uh, like religious leaders, like teaching them how to do it, uh, f physical bodies to uh, meet up at, and like, like presence. So, uh, one of the things I, I'm just identifying as is presence. Uh, which are physical things that you can put down on like a map and so that's where the game board kind of a thing will be played into this whole thing the other thing would be uh, would be your relationship like your values and everything that like in relations to society because one of the main things is uh, talking about how uh, the what is considered sex and uh, sex with a C T S, not an X. Um, that and uh, in combination to uh, and uh, churches. So uh, the main uh, difference is that a church is usually uh, ooh nice. Uh, the major difference is that uh, is basically like how aligned with the major society uh, the thing is, the institution is. So if you have a high tension society, which uh, means that your values and beliefs are in high tension against, in a high tension, like not agreeing with the rest of societies, then you're going to have less people attend but you're also going to have the more fervent people attend is a good just way to look at that and so one of the thing one of the aspects of how to gain religious uh, human religious economy is to balance well do I want it to be in line with society on this issue or have it be completely away or somewhere in the middle and what about this issue how am I gonna do it with that and so I think I have a good way to do that and that would be like the first way you gain income which you can use to buy uh, the physical presence on the game board. Uh, the last thing of how to gain uh, more uh, religious economy would be through uh, if you have uh, what should we call it? Is through uh, goods. So you have club good. You have club goods. You have uh, public goods, and you have it wasn't investment goods, but it's essentially investment goods, where you don't know if the goods are quality until after you've already bought them. So, for example, car insurance would be an investment good. You don't know how good your car insurance is until after you've already paid into it. The people might be like, eh, we don't want to do it. Like, yeah. Like, there are insurance companies that would be like, yeah, we don't feel like paying it. Not going to tell you why, but we just don't feel like paying it. So, uh, yeah, so those would be uh, mixtures. Uh, so those would be the three next things that you would be able to uh, get that would help incre increase your uh, religious economy. Uh, some of them, and I want to put them into, put those into two different categories where you have events and you have uh, uh, practices. Where events are like one-shot things where you do it and you're like, haha, I have this, and now you discard it. While events happen whenever you do the uh, upkeep turn of getting more stuff. Oh boy, you have a pretty good code right there. Um, but I have a better one in my hand, and I don't want to show you, otherwise you will run away. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And so, what do you do with these... Uh, religious economy token money thingies well to what you need to do is that you need to use them to gain favor 
with the government to become the state-sponsored religion. That is the end goal. Once you have uh, whatever outcome says that you are now the state-sponsored religion, that means you have won the game. And so that's like a basic run-through of uh, what I have and what it will be. <laughs> you have no idea. Now you have a good idea. And blaze ball. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so that that's the beginning and everything. And, wow, has it really been 10 minutes? It doesn't really feel like it. Huh. So, I hope you cannot hear upstairs vacuuming. Because it's supposed to be soundproof. And that would be absolutely terrible. I really hope not. But, uh... Yeah... So, it looks like this game will be over kinda quick. But I want to toy with them so bad. <laughs> I want to see how much damage I can do. <laughs> and blaze ball. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh, so I choked him for a second. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm good. Okay, so I got five, eleven, and I am done with that challenge. And so, ooh, I got roaring skies, and a level up with my fire thing person. <gasps> I got a fire deck box, deck with an E, not I. Ooh, what am I gonna choose? Well, due to the fact that I already have a mission that involves uh, fighting Pokemon, I'll click on that one. So, uh, we have some extra time. So, I want to show you something that I ooh, was not able to show you before. See how flashy and juicy everything is? Oh, it's so exciting. I mean, I'm only getting this. How much? Oh, I still have 12 days. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, uh, let's go to the collection, and let's open things up, because, uh, because that's a fun thing to do. So you have these treasure boxes, where uh, you get usually, like, five coins, and then you get a card. Let's see, Magnetic Storm, each Pokemon in play has no resistance. Ooh, nice. But you also get a bunch of, uh, packs. So, for example, I have one XY series booster pack. One ancient, or oh, two ancient organs, origins, boost them back. Two ancient organs. Uh, one breakthrough, one furious fist. Uh, two primal clash. And one roaring sky. So we just picked that up and you guys got to see me do that. So we're just going to open it up. And it's very juicy. It's very much, it feels like you're opening a new booster pack. As it should, really. And you get a bunch of... Ooh, I've never seen this before. Any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks? And it's only stage one? Oh, that's pretty nice. Um, with Zap... Ooh, a shiny Zapdos. Zap, zap, zap. Zzz. Oh, hey. In this pack, you get both the basic and the evolution. Huh. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, opening packs is very juicy. It's very fun. Um, yeah, so, what did we talk about today? We talked about, uh, my project, essentially. And then I'll be talking about two important things and details that I think are fun things to be talking about. And so, yeah, I will see you next time on Quincy Beolves Pokemon Rambles. Fly high and dream big. Hey everybody, if you liked that video, then I highly recommend you give it a like and comment. It really helps the new channel grow. If you want to see more of my stuff, as well as some fun stuff my friends make, then you should click on the link to the Professionalist channel. They also have a Facebook and Twitter you should like and follow. If you want to see my stuff coming out on an earlier date than on their channel, which includes all the polls, then hop on over to my channel or follow my Twitter. Fly high and dream big.